Now, the next one here, we can take our mass void. We already know how to do this. Add a little, this brush is too big. We're going to add a little soap to our brush. Go into our maskoid. Let's make sure we have a good point on this. Go into our maskoid. And we're going to fill in these orange shapes with maskoid. Before we do anything else. Now you can use a better brush than this, but make sure it's not one of your good brushes. Make sure it's a throwaway brush that uh, you're not going to need to do real painting with anymore. That said, you should still clean this brush with soap and water so that the brush is again usable another day. All right, so we'll let that dry. Let's take a look at our tulip because there are all these basic things that you knew, have to do before you can start to dry brush. So in this case here, you can see this tulip has some gradations in it at the bottom and much more so on this other side. And then just a little dry brush here, but a lot of dry brush on this side. All right, with the tulip, what you can see here is I use several washes of just permanent rose because of the way that this tulip uh, appears in the, uh, in the painting. So on this side here, I just put a very light wash in and feathered it out. On this side, while this was wet, I laid in quite a bit of color and just blended it out. In this section here, I actually lifted the color out with a dry brush so that uh, it would have a nice transition, but would also um, give me the highlight that needed to be in there. Uh, down on the bottom, I added a little yellow, and while this was wet, allowed the yellow to bleed into the red. At this point, we can start to do some uh, actual dry brush technique. Although I think what I would like to do here See if I can get this area to scrub out a little and soften that hard edge. And the same is true here. Just soften this hard edge and let it blend. Now this is going to give me a much softer look in this area. But now I'm going to start to do a little bit more drier work. Uh, down in this section here, we're going to use our skin in order to add more uh, value to this area. And I'm even going to dry it off a little. And feather it out. And start to bring this up into this section where you see all this dry brush going on. And you might have to do this a few times to get it to the stage where you want it to be. I've cleaned the brush, dried it off quite a bit, and then allowed the wet paint to uh, move around on the brush, going back and forth into the pigment 
and then back into the painting um, until I get what I'm looking for in terms of the uh, appearance of this this flower. Now I'm going to go quite dry in here. I'm going to use the same sweeping technique uh, that I used before, only kind of keeping most of it in the dark area and letting it feather into the light area. in order to get the effect. Now if it starts to move the paint in places where you don't want it, like I just did here, you gotta leave it alone, let it dry, and then go back later to uh, modify it. Don't be in too big a hurry. Now I'll go back into an area that's already pretty dry. And start to add more feathering with a drier brush, with a drier brush. If you don't feel confident doing this right away, practice. Okay. Now, obviously, we need to put some darker shadows in here, but I think you can probably handle that on your own without too much difficulty. And as you can see, I've painted this section here. I think I'm going to paint it a little darker at the bottom. When I first did this, I put an underlying layer of pink, thin pink, so that when we lift this color, we should see some of that pink coming up. Blend this out a little bit more. We'll let that dry, because right now it will not be ready to lift. This side is dry, so what I would do here is wet my brush and then go back in and lift the thin line. And that will bring up some of the pink that you see underneath. And the reason the pink comes up is because it's permanent rose. And permanent rose doesn't lift that easily. It makes it easier for you to get the purple layer to come up and still maintain the uh, pink underneath. We should have another stroke in here. Let's see if this will come up. Yeah. Clean your brush after every application because otherwise you're just reapplying paint where you don't want it. Well, we've already lifted some of these veins out of the an anemone, and but we still need it to be darker. So at this point, you can use pretty strong concentrations of color. Um, and again, you can dry brush it in up to the veins because now you have your basic structure and now it's a matter of detailing. And you can go back in and you can start to add some variations in darkness just by using the brush as though it were a pencil because you won't need to put um, value everywhere, you just want it in your dark areas. And you can feather it into the light areas very nicely 
and you can see as I add more value, your lights will come up. and give you that uh, more emphasis on the veins as you add a little bit more value to those areas. Thin that out a little bit there. A wet brush. to change color you can even flare this little brush if you want to but the idea is to build the layers at this point carefully so that you can blend things nicely wet it a little, wet the brush to get it to be 